So in this video, we'll look at Electrify America in 2020. Where have they been? Uh, how far have they come? What are they gonna do next? Um, and you know, the most important question to EV owners, can you drive a long distance on them? Let's take a look. So a little bit of serendipity here, the Electrify America community station at uh, Burlington Mall, just north of Boston, Massachusetts, where we're based, uh, has not come online per se, but it is accessible now. Before uh, today, you couldn't, or at least the last time I visited here in December, you couldn't get access to anywhere near the stations. This was a whole parking lot uh, being constructed and built as part of the mall expansion. So we're making progress. Um, this is actually a site, one of the last few that needs to go online from the Cycle 1 investment. Um, time of recording this, there are uh, 382 sites live with another 82 listed as coming soon. A quarter of those are in places other than California, so around major cities, Boston, DC, New York City, um, all East Coast and West Coast, these cut last sites in Cycle 1. Um, but 75, 76% actually are over in California, um, seemingly due to the regulatory issues over there and being a bit slower to approve um, various uh, permits. So that's been a bit of a drag on the process. We're coming up to 400 is the, uh, the upshot. So we have a massive wave of activations um, in the last year, but also the, um, you know, the reliability has improved. It's kind of last, uh, there was an excellent piece by uh, Tom Maloney on Inside EVs, which I'll link to down below in the uh, description, but it's a must read if you're any interest in um, Electrify America and non-Tesla EV charging at all. Um, that's an important kind of interview that he did there, covered pretty much every base. But today we'll look at um, some of the issues they face still, uh, the reliability that we saw on the trip across to Ohio, where the outbound leg from Boston to Cleveland was predominantly um, Electrify America charging with the one sole small EV go session and then some destination charging mixed in, um, and how reliable they were, what we saw, the cost, the convenience, um, and generally kind of a a little snapshot of where Electrify America is at the start of 2020, as well as a topic I've written on recently in December on uh, three areas I think they need to fix. In terms of our journey over to Ohio, uh, the, the trip was really good. We, you know, my wife noted that it was much easier this time than previous trips we've made. You know, the, the Electrify America stations that we've used uh, were close to the highway. Um, this is part of their remit, so that makes sense. But they were in places where we could stop and have uh, food or a, a rest break. Um, and they were quick, you know, quick enough as you would expect in a, you know, relatively slow charging EV like the Bolt EV. Um, they, they did what they need to do and obviously compared to a journey where you have to go out of your way to get to the DC fast charger or you experience really slow charge rates for some reason. Um, so the, you know, Electrify America has effectively bridged that gap between Albany and Buffalo for us, which was the problem gap before. Um, but the, the journey across was, you know, it started off a little bit rocky with uh, a stop in Albany at the Crossgates Mall, uh, where there's a large Walmart. It was pre-Christmas shopping, so a lot of people, you know, the Saturday before Christmas trying to get their last minute shopping in was not ideal. I didn't really factor that in, so I'll take that one on me. Um, and there, there was a little bit of icing in general, you know, people, uh, there was a guy who pulled in and I just kind of pointed out, you know, don't want to be antagonistic but you might be towed and he left you know soon after that there were some people kind of around the stations but in general you could get to every charger if you needed to so that was a positive even on that busy weekend um, in terms of experience starting it up it was below freezing uh you know the charge rate uh, was always going to be a concern starting up there even though we'd driven a couple of hours i put plugged it in tried to get a charge started just from sitting in the car and using the app and it wasn't connecting I'm just relieving the weight off it myself. I'm soon to get charging. Okay, so that did start. Seems to be holding up. 
it's a minor inconvenience as far as I'm concerned, but it's one to know about. You know, if you lift up the handle a little bit um, and relieve some of the pressure on the uh, from the the charge port to the case, you'll make that handshake, and then you're off to the races. You start charging, no problem. I would estimate there we lost about 20 minutes in the the session because of you know m messing around at the start, um, having to come back to the car. We're just going to come back anyway, but you know, still having to come back and restart the session, do all the same stuff again. So that first session in Albany uh, went from 16 to 37 percent um, to get the 12.2 kilowatt hours that we got. Uh, it was three dollars 16. Obviously, you don't want a uh, session to be interrupted for no reason. Um, that was, you know, me coming out of the store at the time made it okay. But if you're in the middle of a shopping session or a break and eating, uh, you do not want to be dealing with after that was fine it got started up again uh, same issue with the cable you know you have to relieve that weight but then it got from 36 to 83 um, percent which is what we needed to move on to Herkimer so from Herkimer New York everything gets uh, much better you got uh, you know in, in Herkimer it's right off I-90 the New York Thruway you uh, have a you know might not be the the most fancy place in the world but a Denny's is a good place to get a coffee you know pancakes for the kids we we found it just fine and it's right in the parking lot there there's also a red roof in if uh, you know people are wanting to stay and charge up overnight no J1772 in that place which makes it a little bit you know odd that's kind of the uh, argument in in that particular location for having that J1772 plug is that there's accommodation there so it's not the most expensive uh, piece of equipment to put in so something like that would be nice there but you know that's this is the way they're going the strategy they've chosen so that's that uh, we charge from 32 to 88 percent uh, there 88 percent sounding very high to veteran bolt ev drivers who probably flinch at charging much beyond 70 percent but that uh, we needed that this in this case we needed to get on to rochester new york um, and there is a site in waterloo new york that we could have gone to I didn't want to get off the interstate go be there for 10 15 minutes and then get back on the road just to go another 20 miles to the hotel so uh, the idea was to just you know we're in place we're warm we got drinks and food charge for as long as we need to get enough miles to go to uh, just east of Rochester and we made it it was fine that 88% got us all the way to uh, Fairport New York which will be in a future video um, enjoyed the stop uh, that was one of the ones I think that made my wife realize you know just how much things have uh, advanced how we can you know, get off the highway do our thing in the uh, the meal break and crack on to the next place without really having to think about the car so Herkimer was our last stop of day one uh, we stayed overnight uh, in Rochester had a nice breakfast with um, some EV advocates the next morning and the Tesla Cult Club of New York the follow-on drive then was uh, just essentially Rochester, New York to Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we were meeting family in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, where there's Electrify America site. We did stop uh, in Fredonia, New York. So we bypassed essentially Waterloo, New York, uh, Electrify America with the destination charge because we obviously start with around 180 to 200 miles, depending on the conditions. Uh, from that full charge. So moved on to Fredonia, New York, which was just the tiniest bump and really a bathroom break more than anything okay. else. So moved units because the one there in shot is off. It's not showing the app. It is um, replete with charges everywhere. We were here, you can see a pretty sizable gap between Waterloo and we were here just east of Rochester. We bypassed Cheektowaga in Buffalo. Uh, we could have shot for Erie, but it was right on the money. The GOM was saying pretty much the same distance. So we opted for this one, Fredonia, which I will now try and plug into. It's got my membership. Starting up at 23%. Kind of the ideal short stop session, really. Um, not maybe not exactly, but we went from 22 to 56% there. Got 17.9 kilowatt hours over 24 minutes. Um, and the idea there, I guess, is you, you probably want to arrive with the lower state of charge, really. Uh, maybe closer to 10-15% to maximize the 55 uh, kilowatt rate that the bolt can achieve. But up to about 55% is, you know, 55-56% 
Uh, it's a good place to cut off if you don't need the range afterwards or there's a place that you can get to that is another fast charge site because you'll maximize the bolts uh, speed all the way up, you know, highest fast charge speed all the way up to that first taper point. So, uh, you know, just bathroom break, charge, back out on the road again. Erie, Pennsylvania, really not very far in that uh, from that place. So that was not maybe the way we should have done it, but uh, we were meeting relatives there. We made the plan, so we just did the bathroom break and moved on. Erie, we charged for a good long time. That was, uh, you know, we arrived with 25% again and uh, all the way up to 85% charging. We were having food there with them. That was the sit down meal and uh, they were charging their Tesla Model 3. So we, you know, at that point, we were done charging way before the um, the meal was over, so I literally came back to the car, stopped the charge, and drove it back to the uh, the restaurant we were eating at whilst they finished charging. Um, so really, that was not representative again. You know, we could have gone even higher, above 85%, but Cleveland at that point was well within reach, and so we just shut it off. Uh, that was $10.33 for 34.8 kilowatt hours uh, just short of an hour in that so 57 minutes um, that random note there was uh, a higher rate in Pennsylvania I think it's uh, what is it 15 cents per minute in other states that we'd been in before in New York and Massachusetts but uh, on the past plus membership that is um, Pennsylvania bumps it up to 18 cents per minute, but then they don't have any sales tax. So I think that pretty much equalized out. That wasn't, you know, that 10.33 to getting up to 85% wasn't much different from the $10.54 to get up to 88% in um, Herkimer. Um, and that was the final uh, charge. We, you know, from that 85%, we drove all the way through to our relatives in Cleveland. Um, and at that point, your destination charging, so uh, you don't need Electrify America anymore. But had we needed them, they have a site in uh, Mentor, Ohio, which is between Erie and Cleveland. And then there's another site at Sheffield Crossing, just uh, west of Cleveland. So again, bridging that gap, you know, as, as I go down to fully charged live in Austin, um, I won't need those stations, but these this is the way they're connecting things up. In most cases, you can drive 120, 130 miles and you'll have a Electrify America station on that route. There's some routes aren't covered, but you know, essentially in this last year to 18 months, they've blanketed the country. They've covered every, you know, most of the major routes that you need to go east to west. The underlying message after Albany's slight hiccups was that everything was seamless you know the charge session started with no issue they continued i didn't get any interruptions it was us that had to stop the charge you know um and you know if anything the cost uh was perfectly reasonable but you could even get it better by charging more optimally but the the convenience was there things for the family to do things that we um you know just wanted to sit and enjoy a meal sit and uh, get a hot drink you know all that stuff was uh, was in place so and reliability the albany you know hiccups aside was was very good so that bodes well and the, you know with a massive trip coming up um to down to fully charged live and having to rely pretty much exclusively on this network after say Cincinnati, Columbus uh, or Cincinnati, Ohio, um, this is gonna be a pretty big deal. So, you know, this trip to Ohio over the holidays has given me the confidence that I can make this trip down to Austin, Texas.